if you are an e-commerce out there and you import or export you buy stuff from china or you sell on the internet you might want to listen to this conversation because i want to talk to you about when to use a bonded warehouse versus a 3pl a third-party logistics company obviously we are going to speak about e-commerce fulfillment best practices don't go anywhere you're gonna to love today's conversation i guarantee it Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you are to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about e-commerce fulfillment, best practices, and we are going to talk about when to use a bonded warehouse versus a 3PL. First, let's just break down the concept here. Very important. What are customs bonded warehouses? Customs bonded warehouses, those are places where goods are stored before they are processed by customs. Okay, so these goods are held in the warehouse until inspections are completed and the importer or e commerce seller pays the necessary duties. There are different types of customs bonded warehouses from ones that are run by the state to ones that are privately owned and operated. So, what are bonded goods? So, bonded goods are items that are imported and held in a custom customs uh, bonded warehouse pending payments of necessary duties taxes and other charges and also called bonded cargo these goods can either be finished products they are ready to sell to the customer or raw materials that need to undergo manufacturing before they are released again if you're an e-commerce seller or you're in or you're a retailer you're an importer you want to pay attention here and so who basically operates bonded warehouses i've said this before they can be either state run or run by private private parties okay and when you have a uh, private parties running the custom customs uh, bonded warehouses you need to understand that they need to go through a vetting process okay so how do you get your warehouse bonded you must submit a written application to the local cbp director so your application must include information about the premises location and other details it should also be accompanied by other necessary permissions and documents okay so this is really important and so what's really the difference between bonded and non-bonded warehouses with non-bonded warehouses importers need to ensure that all due taxes are paid and inspections are completed immediately with goods stored in bonded warehouses duties and taxes can be deferred until the goods have been purchased big decision time if you're interested in uh, learning more about uh, this topic you might want to check out some of the videos that we did on the topic, including Amazon FBA versus ShipBob versus Ship Hero and Red Stack Fulfillment. We have Odoro versus ShipStation, Shipping Easy and Indisha. We have ShipStation, Shippo, Easy Ship, Paris Ship and Sandal. And we also compared shipping to. We also did a a great uh, a, an in depth review of shipping to Amazon FBA. Let me talk to you about the key factors you need to pay attention to when you are thinking about e-commerce fulfillment best practices. So searching for a top level 3PL warehouse entails many aspects that are sometimes impossible to deal with without professional assistance. And if you don't have professional assistance or guidance or any kind of guidance, it's better that you start doing it now. So there are three things you want to pay attention to. You want to pay attention to an insured warehouse a bonded warehouse and a free trade zone warehouses why those concepts those concepts will pay will actually play a key role when you start thinking about bonded warehousing or you start thinking about buying from china buying from overseas whether you're an e-commerce seller or you are just a retailer those elements will pay a big role what is an insured warehouse an insured warehouse basically means that the warehouse has insurance Okay, that's what it is. And you don't want to consider any warehouse that does not have insurance. And even if they have insurance, the question is, are they current 
on their insurance coverage because god forbid something happens if they don't have the proper insurance i don't want to tell you the losses that you could you could actually bear including the um including the the quality of the products and the reputational damage you might have if you don't sell your products on time to the customer so please you want to ask the warehouse how comprehensive their insurance coverage is so that it covers all uh, catastrophic events like thefts or loss from natural disasters. Very important. What is a bonded warehouse? So funding a bonded 3PL is vital if you are importing goods from overseas and you need to store these items long term until demand exceeds supply. So it's basically a license your warehouse receives from the government to store goods up to five years without immediate payment of duty. Okay, so you may find necessary you may find it necessary to use a bonded warehouse if you need to store your imported inventory for a while and you need product protection. Think about it. Some people actually uh, they buy products from China or from overseas in general. I'm not picking on China here. From overseas in general, and they're waiting for it. The seasonality, they're waiting for the holidays, November, December, and January. You better have a bonded warehouse where you want to store those products. What about uh, a free trade zone warehouse? So you may get many advantages using a 3PL in a foreign trade zone. Similarly to bonded warehouses that we just uh, spoke about, you don't have to pay customs until goods are actually shipped. The difference, however, is that bonded warehouses are only good for storage and not manufacturing. So another major advantage here is that a free trade zone gives you more control over product delivery, whether it is foreign or domestic. A warehouse in these zones ultimately saves you time having to fill out customs entry documents, which are frequently protracted. So the latter also has major fees, which an FTZ, a free trade zone, ultimately helps you eliminate or cut down. So those are things you need to pay attention to. I want to talk to you about the process here. So how bonded warehousing works. So if you're planning to use customs bonded warehouse for your e-commerce business, you want to know how the whole bonded warehousing process works. Okay. So basically goods are imported to a bonded warehouse. So goods are received into the warehouse where the liability is incurred by the warehouse owner and imported under a warehouse bond. So at that time, all the necessary duties, taxes, and customs charges are deferred until the goods are ready to leave the warehouse. Okay, pretty simple so far. You following me? Okay, so the goods are stored, manipulated, or undergo manufacturing operations. But this, this depends though. So what happens here is that the goods are then stored appropriately if you want it that way. And sometimes using specialized storage services. So this can include things like bulk liquid storage or deep freeze depending on the type of goods i mean obviously if you have uh, foods versus uh, electronics you have different types of processes in place okay so while the goods are stored in the warehouse they may be sorted repacked cleaned or manipulated through other processes under the supervision of a customs authority so in the case of bonded raw materials they may undergo manufacturing operations while the duties are still deferred. Okay, so those are things you need to think about. And the thing here is that orders are then fulfilled to customers or sent to the next destination. So after manipulation, the goods are sent to the next destination or fulfilled to the customer. So many bonded warehouses are also fulfillment centers, meaning that they offer their own staff for picking, packing, and shipping. So they take care of their order fulfillment process ensuring that, that your goods will reach the end user big decision time big decision time do you currently have do you, are you currently using a bonded warehouse do you do you feel the needs to uh, to get one this is important you need to understand how the process works okay talk to me about that because I've talked to you about so far I have told you about the orders uh, they are the the goods are imported they are stored they are manipulated all this but you have to pay duties fees and taxes and this is where working with a bonded warehouse is kind of cool because the goods can be withdrawn for consumption once all the necessary import duties and taxes have been paid with bonded warehousing these fees don't need to be paid unless the goods are withdrawn for consumption that is distributed to customers or sent to to whatever third parties you want the goods to be sent to 
So this is the biggest difference with non-bonded warehouses where you have to take care of duties and inspections immediately. Let's continue the conversation about bonded logistics, folks. This is an important element that you need to think about. So why do companies, why do e-commerce sellers, why do retailers, why do importers use bonded warehousing? They may choose to use bonded warehousing for a number of reasons. First of all, importing large quantities of goods from foreign countries is expensive, right? So when you're, when you're importing a large number of goods from, uh, from overseas, the cost can be considerable with added duties and taxes on top of the cost of goods and transport don't forget that transport so instead of paying instead of paying all all of those costs at once bonded warehouses give retailers the flexibility to control when they pay by releasing the inventory as desired so this significantly reduces the cost to import large quantities of goods for your e-commerce business and uh, utilize another benefit is that utilizing local fulfillment and shipping vendors for international commerce is kind of cool okay many brands find this attractive because they can store goods in foreign countries in different bonded warehouses and not pay import duties until a product is purchased and shipped out from the warehouse so this simplifies international e-commerce selling as you don't have to worry separately about import storage and fulfillment you may use also a bonded warehouse for if you have a uh, long-term storage solutions this is kind of good also because the duration of time goods can be stored is beneficial in the united states bonded warehouses can store items for up to five years without paying duties so this addresses your long-term warehousing needs while minimizing the need for travel okay you can also uh, store restricted goods so a bonded warehouse is often the best solution for storing restricted goods such as alcoholic beverages, animal byproducts, and certain food products. With the extra legal requirements and paperwork involved, importing restricted goods can be complicated. So to add to the complication, there is a strict time frame that is typically given for storing restricted goods before the paperwork is sorted, and custom, customs bonded warehouses are exempt from this deadline, giving retailers more time to sort out the necessary paperwork and permits. Okay, you can also use uh, one advantage that we have found also is that with uh, customs bonded warehouses, you can keep costs low when selling internationally. Okay, and you can use bonded warehousing services with fulfillment capabilities. This is really good because some bonded warehouses come with fulfillment capabilities, meaning that they offer their own staff for picking, packing, and shipping. This can be convenient, especially if you have an e commerce business and you want to sell internationally. This is really good. However, their fulfillment service tends to be slow and basic and may not live up to the standards you have already set for your business. And you can also shop around, always shop around for the best shipping carrier rates. And you can outsource fulfillment to a 3PL with global fulfillment centers. Think about that. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation about bonded warehouse, customs bonded warehousing versus 3PL fulfillment. So in the first part of today's show, I've spoken to you about the customs bonded warehousing, right? Now we want to talk about 3PL fulfillment. So what is, what is it? So fulfillment is the process of packing and shipping e-commerce packages, right? A 3PL is a third-party logistics company that specializes in handling logistics for other companies okay however 3pl fulfillment involves much more than packing and shipping orders so a 3pl fulfillment warehouse will handle inbound freight and storage as well and many e-commerce fulfillment companies provide extra services like kitting returns processing or inventory management and there are many other words used to describe fulfillment warehouses so you have 3pl logistics e-commerce fulfillment, fulfillment centers, product fulfillment, and order fulfillment, to name a few. So what are the types of warehouses that you need to uh, f you need to be aware of? 
you have a private warehouse. This is owned and operated by a company that uses the space for its product storage. So some private warehouses are, are also fulfillment centers that serve just, just one client. You know, for example, if you take a large retailer like, uh, let's say, Walmart or Target, they may own and operate private fulfillment warehouses. You also have a public warehouse. So this actually uh, rents space to businesses and, in the, and individuals. And government entities often own and operate public warehouses. And companies most commonly turn to public warehouses for extra storage capacity. And they don't rent the space long term. You can have a bonded warehouse that I've already explained. And when we talk about a dis distribution center versus 3PL warehouse, you have to understand that there is some kind of dichotomy here. A distribution center is a warehouse that redistributes products, often for large retail or grocery chain stores. And deliveries come in from wholesalers and then the distribution center divides them up to send to individual stores. So a truck might come into the grocery distribution center filled with just tomatoes or eggs or cereal. And trucks then leave the center carrying smaller amounts of a variety of foods headed for specific grocery stores. Okay, so while a 3PL warehouse might seem similar to a distribution center, there are several differences. 3PLs provides fulfillment services for many different clients. So distribution centers usually process goods for just one company. Fulfillment warehouses are part of the e-commerce industry. Distribution centers most often serve brick and mortar retail stores. And third party logistics warehouses occupy a different spot in the supply chain from distribution centers. A 3PL will receive goods from a supplier or wholesaler, process online orders, and ship products directly to the to the end customer. A distribution center will receive products from suppliers and ship them to stores, thus remaining within the wholesale space. And distribution centers never deal with individual customers. Let's talk about 3PL warehouses. So when you what are the kinds of 3PL fulfillment warehouses you need to think about, you need to uh, consider? Fulfillment warehouses come in different flavors, right? Different forms and shapes to, make, to meet the diverse needs of e-commerce companies. Here are just a few of the different types of warehouses I want you to be aware of. So you have the climate controlled warehouse. So many e-commerce companies now ship products that need cold storage. So climate control might mean anything from keeping the temperature at a consistently cool, cool temperature yeah, to refrigeration or freezers. Okay, Many food products need cool or cold storage. Electronics, artwork, antiques, and other delicate items might require storage in a climate control warehouse. You also have a food grade warehouse. So fulfillment for full food products sometimes need cold storage and food items always require a 3PL warehouse certified to provide food grade warehousing. And food grade 3PLs need to meet FDA requirements and pass periodic inspections to meet food products safe to make sure that the products are safe. Also, food grade fulfillment may require the warehouse to track package expiration dates. And then you also have automated or smart warehouses. So smart warehouses, they provide 3PL fulfillment services. However, instead of a floor filled with human pickers and packers, robots and AI do most of the work. Think about it. This is, a, this is like sci-fi, right? <laughs> Examples of a warehouse automation includes drones that fly to shelves to pick items for orders and movable shelving units that come to a picking station while the picker stays stationary. So the tech that runs a smart warehouse is just as crucial to its operations as the physical processes on the warehouse floor. You also have specialized fulfillment warehouses. So those actually specialize in particular products. For example, there are warehouses set up to store and ship only apparel items. So an apparel warehouse might have space for products on hangers and stations for inspecting returns for damage. And a fulfillment center specializing in books, for example, will have climate control to ensure that the pages don't curl. And a warehouse that works with products labeled as hazardous, hazardous materials, will follow federal regulations about hazmat handling. So those are things you need to pay attention to. So what type of fulfillment warehouse does your company need? It really depends on 
the kind of niche you're in, the kind of customers you serve. So whatever special needs your e-commerce company has, there is likely a 3PL fulfillment warehouse built to handle them. So when you look for an order fulfillment company, be sure to find one that has experience working with the products that you are selling. This is very important. So here is the decision time, folks big decision time which one to choose right so we're talking about customs bonded warehousing and we're talking about 3pl warehousing which one to choose talk to me first of all you need to know the kind of product you're selling you need to know the regulatory context within which your your products are being sold you need to know everything about customs duties all those fees all those taxes you need to know that so for retailers they require efficient international fulfillment Outsourcing to a 3PL can be a better option than bonded warehousing. You may want to consider a 3PL instead of a bonded warehouse if any of the following applies to you. Let's say if you're fulfilling orders in multiple countries. So when you are stringing together multiple independently operated bonded warehouses in different countries, shipping times, order accuracy, and overall capabilities can vary greatly across different regions, right? Conditions in in Asia are not the same as in the States and neither the conditions that you have in Europe are the same or what you have in Latin America. So think about that. So as such, managing fulfillment in different countries can lead to a logistical nightmare. On the other hand, a 3PL fulfillment center can actually spread across multiple countries that work seamlessly together. So this actually streamlines international fulfillment with consistent services in terms of uh, warehousing, for example picking and packing and last mile delivery so you can also choose uh, you can also choose a 3pl instead of bonded warehousing if you are concerned about the shipping or fulfillment experience if your customers expect fast shipping if you are looking to keep fulfillment operations streamlined this is very important so for example if you let's say um, if your customers expect fast shipping you really need to make sure that you basically do the work that it takes. As I said earlier, bonded warehouses that do handle diff, they, they do handle fulfillment usually provide slow delivery experiences. So good luck guaranteeing two-day shipping when you leave fulfillment to a bonded warehouse. But with the 3PL fulfillment center, you get fast and affordable international shipping to allow efficient fulfillment even with international orders. Okay, fulfillment centers strategically located in different countries make it easier to get orders out of the door faster so your customers can get their orders in as early as two days. This is really important. All right, folks, this is it for today's conversation. We were having a very passionate conversation about the uh, e-commerce fulfillment best practices and when do you use a bonded warehouse versus a 3PL. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.